Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Masoud Jairad, and uh, I will talk about modeling of turbulent flow through the ejector of ethical stage ejector refrigeration system. Um, first, uh, I should say some introduction about the work. Actually, the energy requirements from low cost resources direct us toward uh, using refrigeration cycles instead of conventional <coughs> systems because in ejector and absorption cycles it's possible to use solar energy, geothermal energy and also dissipative energies from combustion, for example, systems. And uh, ejector cycles have lower coefficient of performance actually uh, we denoted by COP during the presentation. Uh, yeah, they COP are less than common stream compression cycles, but they need uh, less equipment. It's very important, and uh, no lubrication is required, and also they have low costs of maintenance. So these are the advantages of uh, ejector refrigeration cycles. Uh, here uh, we can see the components of a conventional uh, ejector refrigeration cycle, we denote it by CERC, a generator, an evaporator, an ejector, a pump, and an expansion valve. So about the ejector, uh, First, I should say that ejector is the heart of the system, and it's a, a substitution for uh, mechanical compressors uh, in compression refrigeration systems. It has two essential tasks, the ejector. Uh, first, making the vacuum and discharging the fluids, and the other task is to mix the fluids. We will see in the next slide. That how does it work? Actually, it's a simple model of a vacuum pump or compressor, I mean the ejector, without moving parts. It uses the kinetic energy of high pressure fluid before it, yeah. Uh, exist from the generator here and uh, move low pressure fluid entained <coughs> exit from the evaporator and entain it uh, and mix them together. About the generator, as mentioned uh, before, using uh, the dissipative energies or solar energy or geothermal energy, uh, we can uh, prepare the heat for the generator. <coughs> In a uh, refrigeration cycle with solar energy generator, actually solar collectors are used in a closed cycle, another cycle to warm up the operating fluid and then it exchange its heat uh, with a, using a heat exchanger with the refrigerant which works in through the cycle. Uh, about the condenser, I can say that, as you know, the heat of vaporized refrigerant is exchanged with the condensation fluid, which is water on air, for example. And about the expansion valve, the expansion valve has two tasks. Uh, first, to flow the liquid refrigerant from condenser to evaporator with the same rate of evaporation, and then to make pressure difference between them, that both of them can work properly. Yeah. Uh, and, okay, here is a schematic of uh, an ejector, and uh, we can see the different parts, consists of uh, a nozzle, a constant diameter part section, and also a diffuser. Initial fluids, initial fluids, number one, uh, flows through the nozzle 
and expand uh, isentropically to pressure P2, we will see in the next slide, and move, and this flow moves the intained fluid with pressure PE and TE from the evaporator. This with number two comes from the evaporator, and this flow from the nozzle intain this another one with itself. So then the flows are mixed after the choked region of the nozzle. They will mix here. And before constant diameter parts, they will mix, they will be mixed. Then supersonic mixed flow of fluid flows through the constant diameter pipe, this section. And a normal shock will occur at this section, which increase the pressure from supersonic to subsonic. We can, it's better to see it in the next slide. Yeah. So here is the diagram of pressure and also the velocity uh, before. This is the isentropic part the no through the nozzle. Then here is a normal shock wave where the pressure increase increases and the velocity decreases to subsonic from supersonic. This one, this dashed line is the sonic velocity line. Okay, the location of shock wave depends on, yeah, we know that it depends on the back pressure yeah, in the condenser. Finally, the subsonic flow inserts the diffuser and um, compressed isentropically to pressure P indexed by C between generator and evaporator. This is how an ejector operates. But the idea here is to use a two-stage ejector for the refrigeration cycle. Uh, a two-stage ejector, despite the common models, doesn't it doesn't mean to separate the ejectors, to use two separate ejectors in parallel or series. But we use an unconventional model in which the ejectors are merged into a structure. So what happened in a two-stage ejector is that uh, the first stage ejector has no diffuser and it is connected from constant diameter part, it's constant diameter part, to the second one, okay? So the first one has no diffuser, just connected directly from its constant section part to the next ejector. And it consists of a generator, but the generator uh, is a, a two-circuit generator a condenser again, uh, an expansion valve, circulation pump, circulation pump, and uh, a two-stage ejector, which can be seen here. And the working fluid is what? So, here is a schematic of a two-stage ejector, and this is the geometry we model, and the information of the dimensions, and the length, and the radius, heights can be seen in this table. Also, we can see the connection parts between different parts of two-stage ejectors in this figure. So the objectives are. Uh, using CFD to model and investigate the performance of the ejector based on the cycle operating conditions. And then comparing one stage with two stage ejector refrigeration cycle using EES software, which help us to, um, the software, the EES software can help us to obtain the transport and thermodynamic properties of working fluid. And then studying the effect of cycle parameters such as evaporator and generator temperatures on the cycle general performance and the system coefficient of performance. Here 
are the governing equations. I'm not going to explain more about the equations because we use a solver, fluent solver. So it's just to say that we use the standard cape solar model to compute the turbulent viscosity applying coupled implicit solver. And for near wall treatment, we use the standard wall function, which gives reasonably accurate results for the wall bounded high Reynolds flows. Here is the grid network. We use simply structured tetrad wall grids with fine mesh near the nozzles and some other areas like such as the walls, near the walls. The solution algorithm is to solve the governing equations by chemical safety package fluent. They are discretized using the control volume technique. We use the second order of wind discretization scheme for the momentum, turbulent kinetic energy, and turbulent energy dissipation rate. And also quick scheme was used for volume fraction. A relaxation shield factor of 0.2 uh, was used for the pressure momentum while it was 0.1 for the slip velocity, volume fraction, and K and epsilon. Uh, we use also experimental data of gas phase holdup to determine the outlet boundary condition for our safety modeling. <coughs> the process of solving multi-phase systems we know that inherently it's difficult. So to improve the convergence behavior, the initial solution calculation is recommended. It is obtained, the initial solution I mean, um, by solving the volume fraction and slip velocity equations only. Once a converged initial solution was obtained, then uh, we enable the volume fraction and the slip velocity equations and also, and then the mixture model is computed. The solution is iterated until the convergence is achieved such that the residual of each equation falls below 10 power by minus three. Okay, there are many several um, results from the contours different contours for the mark pressure and so on. And also we have some validation with, with some uh, analytical and experimental results. But here I just present just one contour. Here you can see the contour of Mach number to the ejector of first stage. Uh, at the inflow of the ejector, yeah, we can see that the velocity is very low at the nozzle throat of the first ejector, the Mach number reaches unity here, and then it increases to superstrength state. At the exit, the velocity increases significantly, and hence the pressure is reduced, and the required vacuum is obtained here. And this vacuum is required for the suction of the flow from the evaporator. In the next slide, we can see some good results from cycle coefficient of performance versus operator temperature in different generator temperature temperatures. As we can see here, as the generator temperature increases in a constant at a constant evaporator temperature, yeah, we can see that um, the coefficient of performance decrease. Uh, since the work of the pump and also the heat of the generator both increase, and also the heat of the evaporator slightly decrease as the generator temperature increases. Uh, also the mass ratio of the first and second stage ejector both increase, and uh, the ejector exit temperature also increase. All of these results in decrease in the coefficient of performance by increasing the generator temperature. In the next slide also we can see that uh, here is the mass ratio of the ejector of the first stage versus evaporator temperature as I mentioned when 
the evaporator temperature increase, the mass ratio decreases and also the ejector exit temperature, exhaust temperature also decreases. These happen at constant generator and compressor temperatures. When also the, uh, the uh, evaporator temperature increases, the heat of evaporator increase and while the heat of generator and the work of the pump remain constant. So the coefficient of perform performance increase in this case. Here is also the mass ratio for the second stage, ejector of second stage versus evaporator temperature. The same behavior can be seen here for the second stage. So we see, we saw that increasing the generator temperature while the evaporator and condenser temperature are constant leads to increase in mass ratio at the first and second stages, as well as the exhaust temperature of the ejector. Also, we showed that at the generator temperature, as the generator temperature increases, the heat of generator and the work of the pump also increase, while the heat of evaporator slightly decreases. Hence, the COP of the cycle is reduced. This means that it is possible to use different generator temperatures according to the ap application. Increasing the evaporator temperature causes the mass ratio and ejector outlet temperature to decrease. Hence, depending on the application and the ambient temperature also, it is possible to use higher evaporator pressures. Also, we observed that as Q of evaporator ascends, but Q of generator and work of the pump do not change as the evaporator temperature descends, therefore the coefficient of performance is increased. Uh, finally, it would be worth to say that although R20, R245FA refrigerant, which we used here in some parts as working fluid, has no damaging effects on the ozone layer and also has a high mass ratio. However, it's high cost, very high greenhouse effect and low cycle COP with this working fluid are the limitations. Thank you very much for your attention. The next presentation is also for me. I have time. Yeah, this is the name of the first author. I'm the second, ah. third author. Yeah, I will present the ah. second. Okay. Please stop. Yeah. <laughs>